Thanks very much, uh, Dave, and, um, and thanks, Rosemary, uh, for the invitation. Um, and thanks also uh, to Diane for your words. Um, one of the things Rosemary does is she sends things that members of parliament need to know, and she sends them to us. You know, all of us read about Don, because Rosemary sent it to us, so thank you, and thank you for being great today. A couple of things I want to do. I want to reflect a little bit on the debate that we've had, and then I want to look at some of the things we need to do uh, in the future. Uh, Ian uh, Evans, the uh, Shadow Minister for Work Cover, I'm the Green Shadow Minister for Work Cover, <laughs> and Health and Education and Farming and Fishing and Mining and <laughs> everything else. So it is a tricky, a tricky job for us on the cross benches when we have every every portfolio. But when it comes to Work Cover, it didn't turn out as I expected. What I'd imagined, and I think uh, Rob probably alluded to this, what I imagined is that the government would put some things forward and the opposition would oppose it and they'd propose amendments to fix uh, <coughs> the, the worst bits of it. And we'd have a debate and the Greens, we could put our amendments and maybe others would as well. And we'd have a, a comprehensive debate because it's such an important issue. But it didn't turn out like that. What we had was the surreal experience of the unions uh, and injured workers and their representatives standing on the steps of Parliament sort of baying for the head of the Premier on a platter for what he was doing to injured workers, and we didn't hear boom um, out of the opposition. Now, one of the laws of nature, nature abhors a vacuum. Someone has to step in. Uh, the Greens were happy to do it. Uh, Anne, and I do want to acknowledge Anne uh, in particular, uh, she and I, I think, did most of the heavy lifting on <laughs> work cover. Um, you know, people said, oh, Parnell, he's about great hours. I had a couple of toilet breaks, a few meal breaks, and went for five without a toilet break. <laughs> so, it was a remarkable effort, but did we do it because we were attention seeking? You know, is that what it was about? No, because we're gas bag politicians. And not that either. <laughs> it, was, it was such an important issue. My inbox, my mailbox was full of correspondence from injured workers. Um, and I'll, I'll let you in on a secret here, as, as the Greens Member of Parliament. I don't have bucket loads of research stuff. How do I work out what position to take on an issue that comes, uh, comes before me? Uh, and I'll tell you in relation to work cover. I had five sources of information and I uh, gave them respect in this order. First of all, what injured workers were telling me about the system and in particular how the system didn't work and how the system let them down. Secondly, I, I talked to the lawyers. I'm a lawyer, I'm an economist as well. Um, I talked to lawyers because at the end of the day what we were debating in Parliament were new laws and so I had to try and understand exactly what all these clauses and subclauses and paragraphs and subparagraphs meant. So I spent a lot of time with lawyers. Um, the lawyers helped me to draft amendments and I'll get to those in a minute. Next I spoke to the unions uh, as the ones who collectively were representing workers and last of all, last of all I spoke to work cover staff, bureaucrats and the business lobby. That was the order in which I, I spoke to people to work out what was the problem and how did we go about uh, fixing it? So we had a debate. Ian said that it was a rush debate. And I accept, I accept, Ian, what you're saying in relation to the lower house of parliament. The lower house of parliament is formed by the party with the most members. They control it. They control the agenda. They control the timing. It would have been rushed in the lower house of parliament. But what I still fail to understand is why the opposition didn't just do the simple sums where they know that on the floor of the Legislative Council there are 21 votes. Only seven of those are the Labor Party. Right? The Liberals have eight and the crossbench have six. If we had managed to uh, work together, we could have sensibly <coughs> dealt with the 150 or more amendments that I put forward. Instead, I put them up, we debated them, we voted, I lost. Put the next one up, debated it, voted, and we lost. Every single one, one after the other. 1 a.m., it's 2 a.m., it's 3 a.m. We kept going because the public gallery had people in it at all hours. You know, people in uniforms, the prison officers are there in their uniforms, blokes with hard hats sort of underneath the, the, the desk there, um, making sure that their issues were being put forward. So I'm still disappointed that we didn't have the opportunity for a thorough debate. And I don't accept it was just the government pushing it through. I don't think they had a mandate. Did they go to the last election saying, by the way, guys, 2006 vote for Mike Rann and I was slashing injured workers' entitlements? I don't remember hearing that. There was no mandate. We could have had a proper debate. 
Anne used the word filibuster. I disagree with Anne on that. The filibusters were deliberately, <laughs> deliberately wasting time just for the sake of it. We had so much material that was things that were sent to us from injured workers. It was their stories. We needed to put them on the record. And Anne's right. Um, I stopped after eight hours. I reckon I stopped about halfway through the folder. So we could have gone longer. But I think we had made our point. It's generally regarded as rude and impolite to go that long. But I think we, I think we made uh, our point. The final vote was predictable. Uh, the entire crossbench uh, voted uh, against the legislation. Liberal and Labor combined to vote for it. <coughs> I said at the time that I would give the Labor Party members in particular one last chance to redeem themselves. I'll bring it back before the election. So I did a couple of months ago. Brought it back. Um, the greatest hits version, if you like. You know, <laughs> not 150 amendments, but you know, five or six of the key issues, things like uh, common law rights, reversing the step downs for payments, um, uh, some of the things in relation to medical panels, just to give Labor one more chance. Because the great irony, and no great secrets out of school, I'm not going to name them, but I had a conga line of Labor people knocking on my door as if I'm some father confessor saying, oh, sorry, we had to do it. We didn't really like it, but we had to do it. They made us do it, sort of thing. I mean, I'm not going to give them confession. You know, this is the Labor Party. The absolution. <laughs> absolution. Yeah, the Labor Party um, basically uh, turning on the people who've supported them loyally over the years. 